I am normally used to just being delayed by Dota TV. But everyone, well, hey everyone, it's Basekip uh, bringing you guys another game for the defense of the amateur tournament. This is going to be last five over on the Radiant side up against Scenic, who are going to be on the Dire side, just waiting for Doc to load in right now, and then we'll be getting underway. This is a lower bracket game, so a best of one for the defense of the amateur tournament. And um, hopefully going to have Doc load in and then get underway. So Doc's going to load in. Uh, Yamakin's going to be drafting for last five. Scenic's going to be draft, uh, and for Scenic, we've got Deca Mano uh, drafting, and yeah, going to be getting underway right now. So last five with the first ban, and therefore the first pick over on the Radiant side. Hopefully, not going to be a significant advantage. I know that the win rates right now are skewed a little bit in t favor of the Radiant, but. I mean, pros have sort of expressed that that's overall just because of nerfs to sort of nerfs to the Aegis advantage and, um, you know, sort of the flavor of the month being pulling that mid lane uh, for the Radiant side. But I'm not sure if we're going to see L5 go for that this game. So it's going to be the Batrider ban, and Gondar is going to be banned out as well by Scenic. So uh, Scenic maybe going to have to ban out the TA here. Uh, Otherwise, they've given Last Five some pretty good setup to pick it up. Last Five could just try and force the Darkseer through the pool as well. My microphone levels have fucked up, so sorry about that, guys. You would have been getting quite a bit of fan noise. I'm really sorry about that. Um, and I really should, sh should stop jumping around. But anyway, Last Five, I think they really just need to set up here to try and get maybe the Templar Assassin if they've got somebody who's happy playing it. Uh, and a, a theme sort of of these defensive the amateur games has been someone getting fairly dominant over the mid lane, over the mid lane, and then just going around and winning all of their other lanes for their team. So Templar Assassin definitely a hero that's capable of doing that. So last five right now, I would just expect them to. I mean, they could ban whatever they wanted here: ban the Undying, ban the Wisp, something like that. And then Scenic, they've got to give them either the TA uh, or give them Dark Seer. So both of which are extremely powerful, uh, both of which you wouldn't really be unhappy to start a lineup with. So there's going to be the, that's going to be the Dirge ban. And now Scenic ha are forced to make a decision between banning the TA or banning the Dark Seer. So they're going to ban the TA. And so probably going to see Last Five choose to pick up the Dark Seer here. Um, we have seen some teams first picking the Jakiro, in fact. But giving away darks here it means that you give away probably the best long laner uh, in the entire game, and so it makes the rest of your lane setup just a little bit easier to have to think about. Uh, it gives you the option to obviously go for a tri lane. Darks here not sort of fixed on the long lane either. You can put him in the jungle. You can, if you wanted to, just put him on a safe lane. I mean, there's no there's no particular advantage to that. But uh, gonna have to see what gonna have to see what last five opt for here. It's actually going to be the Jakiro, so they're giving away the Darkseer here. Um, maybe expect Scenic to pick it up. Darkseer not as strong as he used to be. Took a couple of nerfs to the cast range on Vacuum, Vacuum Cooldown, and Vacuum AoE. I, I want to say were the nerfs that he sustained. But Magnus is actually going to be the pickup here by Scenic. Uh, can be run on mid, can be run obviously on the hard lane. And then goes without saying that he can be run on the safe lane as well. We, we saw, well recently on R Dota 2, so on the Dota 2 subreddit, we saw some jungle Magnus guides uh, being posted up, uh, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the case here. And Wisp is going to be the pickup as well for Scenic. So they might be looking for uh, perhaps a bit of a tri lane here. Maybe look to pick up the Sven uh, or the CK in terms of their carry, just to partner up with that Wisp. Uh, I only mentioned Wisp in terms of a tri lane, just because he does do so well in terms of the regen. Uh, obviously, you get one times regen on him, you get 1.5 times on everyone through the tether. So basically, double, well, double and a half all of your regen. It works extremely well. Wisp does need to take that damage, but he's got the option there. And some fairly aggressive picks right now for the last five. Uh, they're gonna pick up the Queen of Pain for their solo mid, and probably gonna have that Faceless Void down on bot. Faceless Void comboing extremely well with Jakiro, and last five wanting to grab that up before, um, before this first ban phase. And Scenic gonna well, gonna have to see if they're gonna opt for their carry now or if it's gonna be some heavy bans on supports and neither team uh, gonna get the best sort of second support. 
Uh, we'll have to see. Last off, I have to give them the upper hand right now in terms of team fight. Uh, Scenic have only got the Magnus. They don't have any damage on top just yet, but Magnus can turn any melee carry into a cleaving team fight monster. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes. But I would expect to see the Sven or the CK, if not picked up here, probably in the next phase, if they're not both banned out uh, by last five. And CK, there's, there's another, well, something worth mentioning with uh, when he combos with the Wisp. Every single time you hit the Reality Rift, uh, when you're tethered, the Reality Rift will pull, uh, pull somebody through such that they get stunned by the tether. So it's super easy to connect uh, that way. It's a little bit cheesy, in fact. And CK obviously offers some great ganking potential with that relocate uh, as well, so... And I, I wonder, okay, here's, here's the thought process, right? I know that there is a few strange issues with Skewer, in that if you have somebody being skewered by Magnus, and then you blink partway through the Skewer, you can, you know, you can bring someone along for the blink as well. So I wonder if you can maybe Fountain Skewer with Magnus Wisp, uh, something along those lines, if you just start the relocate from your Fountain, Skewer them right in the last second sort of of the duration uh, of that relocate. But I don't know, it's, I guess it's something worth testing. Somebody maybe load up a load up a practice lobby in and let us know. So Tiny's gonna be the ban out here uh, by last five. So that's that's definitely a mid ban there. I mean, Tiny can run him in your safe lane and probably looking at the Tiny Wisp combo there. Darkseer now gonna be the ban uh, for Scenic and last five would have liked him, I think. Definitely looking for that team fight. Definitely looking for that long laner as well. They've got their safe lane. They've got their mid. Uh, they could opt to grab a jungler as well. Sven's going to be the ban, so it's going to be targeted bans on those carries that combo oh so well with Wisp. And expect to maybe see the CK as the last ban for last five. The Shrek, even more team fight, can be banned out by Scenic. Uh, they have picked up the Windrunner and the Magnus, so they're probably not looking for a hard laner right now. They could run either of those heroes mid as well. So they've got some options available to them there, and Ice Path, worth mentioning, uh, it's fairly good against Magnus if he starts to skewer, and I believe he's stunned, and I'm not sure if this is specific to Ice Path, but he will sort of just be held in place uh, for the duration of that of that stun, so he won't be able to, to skewer away, so it's, it's reasonably good against him, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's a unique property to Ice Path or just stuns. Uh, in general, most of the time Magnus is going to save that skewer for when he's fairly sure that he's going to be able to uh, make his make his escape. And last five, Invoker's actually going to be the ban. That's a t well, that's a mid ban, uh, more or less, I suppose. I mean, Magnus could be running the jungle. You can run your initiator on your safe lane uh, as well. And I guess I'll just I'll say hi to everyone who's tuning in. Uh, if everything's looking okay, can you just give me a heads up? Uh, I won't get it for two minutes, obviously, but uh, it would be good. And Nature's Prophet going to be banned out right now by Scenic, so a little bit of push. Jungler targeted there. Uh, I'm not sure if Last Five have a Chen or Enchantress player. The Chen could be a fairly good pickup here. Get that mid-game uh, XP and gold advantage. Faceless Void is looking to take this pretty late again. He, he's only got right-click and, and the Chronosphere. That's... That's all he really brings to the table, and to buff up that right click, you really just need to get him farmed. So last five really need to hold on to their towers. They really need to hold on to these, to these early team fights. But they've got the staying power with the Queen of Pain. They've got the staying power with the Jakiro as well. So not in a bad position right now. They just need to pick up a long laner, perhaps in the Beastmaster, uh, something along those lines. There's not a whole lot of, whole lot of hard laners left with Scenic picking up that Windrunner. And last off, I'm gonna have to see what they opt for here. They might be looking for another support. Again, they might just be looking for a jungler. They could be trying to try lane down on bot, but Windrunner and Magnus, both fairly evasive, fairly hard to, to kill off. But with a couple of solid stuns uh, with the Jakiro and whoever they've got, if they can just get, get through the duration of the escape, then they're gonna be fine. But they're actually gonna pick up the Enigma. Uh, that slipped my mind there, so. Gonna have that jungler. They're gonna have even more team fight on top of what they've already got. Uh, unfortunately, to me, Black Hole can't even really compare uh, to the Reverse Polarity right now, and Vengeful Spirit's going to be the pickup, a little bit of a counter to the Enigma there. Swap is going to be cancelling Black Hole uh, through BKB, and until Enigma gets that BKB, there's always just Magic Missile as well, so they're not going to be forced into using the swap. And I mean, making the comparison between Reverse Polarity 
and Black Hole. Magnus has got free initiate from Skewer. It's a 120, 110, uh, 100 second cooldown, and I'll just take myself offline there so we don't get any untoward messages. And But Black Hole, 200, 190, uh, 180, so... I mean, Magnus ultimate up almost twice as often uh, as the Black Hole, and he's got that free initiate on top. So, last five, we'll see if they try to stack on even more AoE here. And yeah, it is going to be. So they have got a huge wombo combo lined up right now. If they can connect to this, uh, it is going to be absolutely brutal. I mean, they've got the Epicenter, they've got the Black Hole, they've got the Chronosphere, they've got Sonic Wave, they've got Macrofire, they've got Damage Galore, Stuns Galore, and not bad, uh, not bad team fight, well, not bad, like, skirmish fighting either. They've got the Burr Strike, they've got the Malthus Stun on the Enigma, Jakira's obviously got that very spammable Ice Path, Queen of Pain, if she does okay mid, which she should do, um, especially given Scenic's lineup, uh, gonna be doing some great damage as well, so everybody's just gonna pick up their heroes, we'll be getting into the game, I'll run over who's playing what while I relentlessly butcher everyone's names, because as Toby says, uh, we Australians, or I guess guess not I actually, is, well, I'm not actually Australian, but uh, we Australians do tend to, to butcher the pronunciation uh, on everything, so just waiting on Doc to pick up that enigma on last five. Maybe he hasn't fixed his issue. Ten seconds, just, just looking at chat right now, guys. Um... Yeah, okay, so Doc can pick up the Enigma, and we are going to get underway. So over on the dive side, over on Scenic, we've got Curb playing the Vengeful Spirit. We've got Erky playing the Magnus. We've got Decamano uh, playing the Wisp. We've got Freaks on this Lifestealer, which is their last pickup. And we've got Mick on this Winner rocking some cosmetic items. We've got Samface over on Last 5 playing the Faceless Void. We've got Yamakin playing the Jakiro. We've got Doc playing this Enigma, we've got some ridiculous map drawing and pinging. I am not used to this. Uh, normally when you spectate via Dota TV, you don't get any of the pings, you don't get any of the map drawing. Uh, so we've got some we've got some legitimate strategies going on here. Uh, we've got some pings on the ancient camp. And oh anyway, running over who's playing what, we've got Paul G playing the Queen of Pain. We've got Lewis on this hard lane Sand King. Uh, no stout picked up for him, just got the gauntlet there, a little bit more survivability, I suppose. There is quite a bit of harass in whatever lane. Uh, Scenic are going to be looking to run up on this top lane, and they could even have their uh, Lifestealer just jumping into the jungle for a little bit once he gets a level or two. And they've got some good kill potential between the Wisp and the Venture Spirit as well. So it looks like Magnus is going to be on the hard lane. He's got some wards picked up already, uh, or perhaps Winner. She's got a little bit more of a bottle rush uh, set up right now. So, yep, gonna be getting underway. I think I think I mentioned every, well, who's playing what, and yeah, Yamikin's gonna be on the Jakira. So, awarding the start, we've got a lane ward down uh, for Scenic. We don't have anything down just yet, but Doc gonna be placing out an Observer there. Gonna scout out that Invisibility Rune, and you're gonna be going down to pick that up as well, perhaps. Looks like they're just leaving it for now. And Erky now finally getting down towards the bottom lane. Didn't have any time to get any wards set up. And lots of defensive wards right now uh, for Doc. Doesn't want to get invaded at all on this bottom lane. But he's going to pick up that invis as now he's looping around. And this Magda needs to be extremely careful. He's got the first point up in Skewer. So should be fine at least for a little while. They are going to spot that ward going down. And he is now in the jungle right now. But he's still got the Skewer. He's going to be trying to block out the pull camp as well and actually first blood gonna happen up on top but magnus is in trouble as well in comes the slow malv is done ice path not gonna connect and the skewer away doc gonna be dragged into tower range so sand king going down up on top for that first blood did they have any anti invis they must have i mean he had the sandstorm but he might have been stunned out of it uh, by the tether um, so first blood going down there sorry guys missing that uh, add one to the tally and unfortunately, Doc skilled Malefus to try and get that first blood down on bot. And the pull camp's being blocked out, so he needs to get level 2 before he can head into the jungle. That's going to slow him down a lot. And we've already got some pulls running for Scenic up on this top lane. They're probably going to be pulling the small camp as well. Uh, Curb looking that way right now. So Lewis not going to be having a fun time. Needs to be playing fairly safe uh, on this hard lane Sand King. Almost up to level 2, so he's going to have that point in Burst Strike soon. Uh, not the best escape, obviously a very, very short range 
at level one, but uh, it does help all the same. And Yamakin gonna be able to pull this at least once, not gonna be able to get the stack off. There is a ward blocking that, but uh, it's a little while until L5 are gonna be able to get some sentries. Doc can afford them fairly soon, but he really needs to be, um, really needs to be farming towards that fast soul ring so he can just stay in the jungle. And Yamakin might have enough gold in just a second, but that stack's not going to go off. Uh, I'm not sure if it, if, if it was even properly timed. On mid, Palchi doing okay against the winner. He's 7 for 3. Uh, Mick is actually 8 for 3, so winner are doing fairly well uh, with a little bit of early damage on this mid lane. Palchi actually a little bit ahead in terms of damage uh, at the moment, just leading by 4 there. Going to dodge the power shot. I uh, already used quite a bit of mana, but he's going to have his bottle in just a second. Uh, picking, up, well, picking up one last hit with that scream there, so he's going to have... Enough for his bottle, except uh, expect that to be shipped out in just a second. And Yamakin yeah, gonna get this pull off. Uh, he's got enough money for some sentries now. Flying courier upgrade there as well. And up on top, a couple of pings coming out. What's going on there? Lewis still level 1 on the Sand King. Hasn't been able to get back into XP range. I mean, denying against melee, it doesn't hurt uh, melee heroes as much as ranged. And so even with these continuous denies coming out from the dire side, just to keep keep the lane in position. Uh, Lewis could move up a little bit just to try and sneak in XP range. Uh, I know that in Dreamhack recently we saw Admiral Bulldog just displaying the XP range uh, as the sort of Dota underscore range display and then just dancing in and out so it made sure that he got some XP. Yeah, so there Lewis is going to get up to level 2 now. And we've got Mick picking up a double damage rune down at bot. Not contested at all by this Radiant Tri-Lane, so Gonna pick that up and gonna have some great last hitting for at least a little while. Or oh, there is a bit of a ganking potential. Gonna connect that power shot as well. So now definitely in control of this middle lane. 13 for 3. Palchi just taking the opportunity while Winner was away uh, to get a few last hits. But n uh, neither of them really getting too far ahead on this middle lane just yet. Bottle crowing right now uh, for the Queen of Pain. Gonna dodge that power shot. So Mick not able to connect that. And Palchi gonna be able to grab. Well, actually, so the. Hold that thought, there's a smoke heading towards mid. Apology, he's got enough for the blink, he's got rank 2 up in the blink as well, not opting for the shadow strike for harass uh, at all, and he's now heading down towards bot. The rune has spawned, Mick gonna pop off that double damage rune, uh, and the wind rune as well, but not able to get down there in time, so Invis is gonna be picked up by Apology, taking quite a bit of damage from these right clicks, and now going into the invisibility, and Mick going sort of the long way back to mid, no he's not, well now down in the low ground. And Paul G just throwing away that, well, throwing off that screen, but fortunate for him that the rune spawn bot, had it been top, he might have been blinking straight into VS, uh, and into the, and into the Wisp as well, and with that amount of chance, then they might have been able to connect the kill if there was a shackle, uh, as well. Freak's now back behind the tier 1 tower, up on top, Lewis, not a whole lot that he can do. Freak's now tanking the tower just a little bit, he might be stuck here. Uh, so now the creeps are on top of him. Support is coming in in the form of this Wisp. Yamakin finally getting some sentries dropped off, so gonna be able to clean out the clean out the pole camp. But there's a stun, tether stun on Lewis. Still hiding for now. Uh, and gonna be a little bit more damage from this last spirit. Now bar striking through. Should be fine. Gonna pop off the salve. So Freak's gonna eat a few tower hits for his trouble. Tether gonna get him out of there just that little bit faster. Lane ward gonna be down in just a second. Uh, Kurt will. Oh. Uh, Curb continues to pull uh, the small camp, and Magnus, he has not been shut down at all down in this bottom lane. He's now up to level 6. Uh, hasn't got a point in the reverse polarity just yet, but I mean, couldn't really expect to find farm down in this bottom lane, but he's found plenty of levels. Doc not being all that active after that, that first blood uh, attempt sort of failed. He does have his soul ring up right now, so fast enigma jungling happening now. He's a, he's a little bit low on HP. There could be a smoke into his jungle sort of any time. They've got good wards, but the thing with the wards is that you feel safe uh, because you do have that vision. And with the smoke, you are really under threat. So Kirk going to pick up that haste. Again, they are smoke towards this middle lane. They want to kill off the Queen of Pain, but they're going to spot Lewis heading down now. The six minute rune, where was it? That was the haste picked up. Lewis going to hide in the sandstorm, but the sentry ward is down. Good bar strike through. Looks like he might be able to make it out here. Is there going to be a shackle latching? Shackle is going to latch a long way there. Sonic Wave going to fly through on the supports. Paul G looking for these kills. Blinks up. Doesn't have enough for the scream. He's now on the retreat. Stun going to land. Tether stun on top. Doesn't have a blink for a couple of seconds, and he's going to be killed off as well. Maybe a little bit of a misplay there by Paul G. And now Doc TP's in towards mid lane. And Paul G, unfortunate. 
Didn't have enough for the scream after throwing out that sonic wave. And a little bit of little bit of cheeky talk back and forth, but not going to be all that word. Uh, we'll, we'll see if Zaymar takes issue. Uh, so up on top, Freaks, he's already finished up this very, very fast. Uh, Hand of Midas with that first blood going their way. And Mick now probably in control of this middle lane. Uh, Queen of Pain a full level behind. And Sentry Ward down. That's actually blocking out the pull camp, I th I think, perhaps, Yamikin. That's a little bit unfortunate. And yeah, Erky now with the Soul Ring finished up, so just spamming out the Shockwave. He's still got the Skira to escape. Uh, if this gank happens, they do have the Chronosphere. Uh, if they definitely want to ensure this kill, might be enough uh, for them to pick that up. But TP support now heading down towards this bottom lane, so VS in position, only level 4 on this Ventral Spirit right now, and Yamakin just going to be refreshing these wards uh, at the moment, but unfortunate plays for last five right now, blocking out their own, well, we'll see if it's blocked out, blocking out their own pull camp uh, after de-warding, and then Paul G sort of throwing his life away there, uh, trying to save Lewis, so Kirk going to throw down the sentry in the one spot that does spot out all three of these wards, uh, and I believe this one as well, so fairly, well, Fairly good center wood placement there. They're not going to spot out anything right now. Camping out the double damage, which has just spawned, so Mick going to be able to pick that up. Phase boots as well. He is doing a ton of right click. And last five, uh, Scenic, they're actually looking for some kills down in this bottom lane. They've got the reverse polarity available and the skewer initiation. He doesn't actually have enough mana for both, uh, so you're going to have to be careful with that. He's only got the reverse polarity or the skewer plus a shockwave. Uh, doesn't have doesn't have the shockwave plus reverse polarity or the skewer plus reverse polarity and we've got these well, we've got the dire here sitting right underneath this radiant ward uh, so not going to be able to find anything maybe just wasting a little bit of time uh, there and not going for a smoke and the ward is going to be directly pinged uh, by last five they know that it's there did they have another sentry on yamakin yes they do they've still got another well, a refreshed lane ward down keeping an eye on this magnus but he hasn't been all that pressured zamface actually taking quite a bit of harass down in this bottom lane and both carries free farming away quite nicely. I mean, the 10 minute metric uh, sort of is that 82 last tip mark, I believe. And Paul G shackled to the. He's going to be forced to blink away, eating the power shot on that mid lane. And Mick now in control. Had he popped that double damage, might have been able to, to kill off the Queen of Pain. And Doc now heads around, but they haven't gotten rid of this ward just yet, so. Uh, we're going to have the Magnus just feeling safe for now. So we've got the sentry down at the moment. In comes Magnus, going to get the nuke off, turning around. And in comes the relocate as well. Out pops the Nakes. It's the whole of the dire team right now. Gonna pick up two kills and the ward didn't even get killed off. And this is a little bit of the power of the Nakes Wisp combo. Uh, Wisp not gonna be dragging anyone back right now. They're looking for Samface. He's gonna time walk through, but it's not a very long range time walk. He's gonna be killed off as well. It's three kills going the way of Scenic right now with five heroes suddenly appearing on this bottom lane. And Nake's Wisp just showing, showing some strength right there. Wisp tethering in uh, the Vengeful Spirit and the Lifestealer just stowing away inside. Wisp is now back, but San well, Lewis didn't have enough mana to be channeling the, the Epicenter right on top of him. And looks like uh, Dekamano gonna be fine just to back off. Doc still wants this. He's looking for the Malefice. Auto attacks a creep there, so not able to get it. And Doc was having a few internet issues earlier, so that may be the cause of that. And the tier 1 gonna fall on bot as well. Scenic definitely in control of this game at the moment. And that ward is still down. They can see it. Looks like they might be heading over to clean it up right now. Magnus has got a skewer to escape and there's only two heroes trying to gank him at the moment. And this is one oh, this is one rich lifesteal right now. Looks like a gank on mid lane. Mick might be going down. The sonic wave is going to connect. They just need that scream as well. So they're going to be able to pick up that kill on mid and last five. That is their first kill of the game. They do have some ridiculous team fight uh, being primed up, and they've only lost one one tower so far. But they do need to be extremely wary of these scenic ganks uh, at the moment. And again, the Wisp relocate is going to constantly be a threat. It's back up as well. And again, with the life stealer, they can have three heroes on top of anyone, absolutely any time. In comes Lewis. They're going to get the Malphus done off on Freaks. There's the rage forced out there, and Freaks just going to be fine to back off in that duration. So he's going to be fine, and Yamakin. Going down on bottom lane solo to Magnus. Not sure what would have happened there, but a little bit unfortunate for him. So Magnus 
Picked up those mana boots up on top. Tier 1 being pressured. Lowe's going to hide in the sandstorm. He's got the bar strike. Just needs to get closer to the trees. Going to be able to hide in the trees right now. But this wisp's going to be thrown out. And the sight from that from the howl. Doc comes in. He doesn't have enough for the black hole. Can pop off the soul ring to get that off. And in comes Sandface. He's looking for curb. He's going to be stunned there. Uh, curb completely out of mana. And Freak's on the retreat. Mick coming in as well. So it's four heroes grouped up for Scenic. And on mid, we've got Doc being chased down by Urki. He can pop off that Soaring. Has already used the Skewer, however. So Doc's going to be fine just to retreat for now. And more pings. Uh, and Urki just going to be backing off for the minute. Uh, looks like to, so it looks like the Reverse Polarity was used uh, on Yemkin on that bot lane to pick up that kill. Lewis heading forward now. Can actually land the bar Strike. Sandface coming in as well. Are they going to go for the Chronosphere? He's winning now. Going to connect the Chronosphere. Winning duration over. So hopefully going to be picking him off here. And Ice Path going to land as well. And Sandface actually going to be able to pick up that kill. So kill for the carry on the Spaces Void. Up on top, Lewis will actually Paul G in big trouble. And he's going to be killed off by these four dire heroes. Wasn't able to escape. Blinking into the trees, but... Looks like they were all just chopped down, uh, perhaps by the Wisp, either tethering through from an angle, uh, or the Skewer from the Magnus. And it should be a tier 1 picked up for Scenic as well. Not sure if Last Dive are going to be looking to defend this. And they're going to have the Reverse Polarity up in a second as well. If they're looking to take a team fight. Chronosphere was used already. They do have the Black Hole and the Sonic Wave available, and the Epicenter as well, if Lewis can pick up a little bit of mana. And pings by Paul G on Lewis. Uh, he is the only one here right now. Tier 1's not going to be defended. T pressure on the Tier 2 now, perhaps by Scenic. And Wisp, they've got that Relocate. They've got the Reverse Polarity up as well. And Jarring coming out now. Uh, last 5, realizing that they could go for either angle. They do have a they do have an Observer Ward. And the Relocate going to go bot, but Doc's picked up an Invis Rune. Not sure if they have any detection right now. Uh, is he underneath the Center Ward at all? No, so he's just hanging out for the moment. Is the Wisp going to take... Uh, going to take the win on her back, perhaps Wisp getting fairly low, and that blind power shot hitting as well on Doc, so he is getting really, really low, and Mick going to spot out that regen. Doc not going to be able to capitalize on that, and Lifestealer finishing up his armlet up on this top lane. He is getting extremely scary, and with the levels in Empower now coming up, uh, his damage is going to be absolutely through the roof. TP now up towards top, Freaks, he is alone up here for now, doesn't have a TP scroll either, but Paul G not going to go for the chase. Uh, they're just going to back off. Pressure on mid. Tier 1 looks like it's going to be falling down here. So, Scenic pick up, well, picking up another tower pretty much for free. That is the last of the Radiant sort of easy di uh, Roshan access right now. And Doc hasn't got a lot of farming done on this Enigma. He's been trying to be fairly active. Getting towards that, uh, getting towards that mech at the moment. But... It's not looking extremely promising for last time. If they can connect their big, big team fight, they can swing straight back into this game. They've got the late game insurance with the Faceless Void as well. If they're willing to just play a little bit of turtle, uh, a little bit of a turtle style, they can just throw out, throw out ultimates to stop pushes. So hopefully not going to be all that worried. And Sand, well, Sand King as well, not terrible uh, in terms of counter pushing, especially once he starts to get some points up. In that caustic sandstorm, reasonable creep clearing damage as well. Freaks is now looking for Paul G up on this top lane. He's going to blink into the trees, looking to do a little bit of split pushing. Wanted this top tier one, but now going to TP down towards bot. And there is going to be a pause by Paul G. And some pings by the dire squad on Mick, realizing that well, that winner is maybe just a little bit out of position right now. He's not under the vision of any wards. We just got somebody lagging. Yeah, so Doc lagging as well, and Samface lagging. So everybody, everybody's lagging. Just going to take an opportunity to look at the XP and gold. So 4k is the XP swing right now. Uh, over 5k gold, both in favor of Scenic. Yeah, and I mean, fairly rich supports on their team as well. That's just the 7 kill split, plus all of these tier 1 towers that they picked up uh, sort of as well. Tier 1 on mid has been picked up by last 5, but most of the gold inequality coming from that. Hopefully, hopefully going to see an unpause reasonably soon. Again, again, the team fight, if it can connect for last five, then they're going to be in a really good position. And if they can, if they can get just a slight edge from winning one, maybe two team fights, 
then they can start to look to push. They've got a fairly good pushing lineup as well. They're going to have some points in the Liquid Fire up on the Jakira. They've got the Eidolons. Uh, and again, Sand King about as good at uh, pushing as he is at counter pushing. So. so yeah, there is the potential there. They are probably a little bit behind right now. Uh, Doc going to be disconnecting off. Queen of Pain actually heading towards a Dagon right now uh, with the Null Talisman and the Staff of Wizardry picked up. It is fairly good to help pop the squishies uh, over on the dire side, like the Wisp, uh, like the Winner and the Vengeful Spirit. Not going to be doing a whole lot against the Nakes, and probably not all that much against the Magnus, but this is one rich Magnus. I mean, he got that solo kill. Uh, they got those kills off down, well, down in this area as well when they brought in all five heroes, and he's got Mana Boots and a Blink Dagger up as well, so... Reverse Polarity going to be extremely scary right now. Uh... Well, on this Magnus, and I mean, again, who's going to initiate four last five right now is the question. They've got the rank four bar strike, but he's not going to have a blink uh, for ages, and Sam faces his housemates, I guess, causing him a few issues there. So may maybe going to be able to convince them to stop whatever they're doing. This is extremely important, guys. You can't, can't be interrupting these uh, amateur tournaments. One day, these guys could be, well, th these guys could be maybe the, the TI4 champions. Not sure if we'll be seeing them. Uh, at TI3, but um, but regardless, so Lura's getting a little bit of farm, he might be able to pick up his mana boots soon, could just pick up an urn uh, if he wants it, Yamakin extremely poor as well, and I mean just the value of those towers, you can sort of see it on the map right now, comparing Radiant Vision uh, and Dire Vision, they're now being hedged back in, sort of behind their tier 2 towers, and I think I, could, I can probably draw on the map right now, so yeah, there we go, so... Just sort of this area right now is the only space controlled by last five, and that's behind their tier twos. They've got a little bit of control on mid, a little bit of safety provide, provided by this Observer Ward. They know where they're in spawns, they don't necessarily know what it is, and now we're finally going to have the unpause, and last five looking to mount a defense down on this bottom lane, and I will just switch over to net worth uh, sort of at this point, and the Lifesteal are definitely pu well, pulling ahead with that Hand of Midas, but Sandface keeping pace. Uh, reasonably well. He's actually heading towards a Battle Fury at the moment, and I will just switch switch back to both Team Vision. Uh, sorry there, guys. But Sandface is going to be farming up these Ancients a little bit. What's flying out for him right now? Uh, so he just needs to finish up the Perseverance to have that Battle Fury uh, at the moment, but Scenic taking control of the Radiant Jungle right now. They don't have any wards down at the moment. Might be some flying in on the courier. No, it's just going to be a wand recipe and a TP down on bot. Need to be fairly careful. They know that the Magnus is there, uh, and this is fairly ballsy play by Magnus. He's only got the one skewer, but uh, L5 not going to be happy to go on this, feeling like it's a little bit of a trap, and again, Wisp can relocate the winner in at a moment's notice, so turning that 2v3 uh, into a 4v3. And Doc still hasn't used this black hole just yet, being reasonably cautious, and again, uh, there is the swap there, going to be able to cancel that off pretty much any time, and he is not close to a BKB uh, at all, so the Tether Stun could hit him, uh, could be the Shackle Shot as well, just with the Mini Stun, even if it doesn't, uh, even if it doesn't latch, and... Uh, Scenic just doing a little bit of split pushing now on mid, but in they come. Sonic Wave in over the top and Scream gonna finish off the winner as well. Dagon connecting there. Two easy kills for last five and they're going for Freaks up on top as well. Gonna be able to pick that up, so... Scenic maybe feeling a little bit too confident in their ability to just split up and push. Trying to get the tier two down on this bottom lane, but they're gonna have to back off at the moment. Lewis now comes in. He is looking a lot better at the moment and Erky. Blink towards, well actually blink towards Krebs, he's going to be killed off, and Erky probably going to be going down here, he does have the reverse polarity, just to try and escape, going to be maybe able to get enough damage off, going to pop the soaring, it is going to kill off one, but Lewis going to go into that sandstorm, and going to be able to pick up that kill, so good little play uh, there by the Magnus, had to use the soaring, which put him extremely, extremely low, but last five with that, they pick up five kills all around the map with only one uh, in exchange, and I will just look at the, the gold in a second, but Doc disconnecting there. So I'm going to have a pause, and I'm going to get away from that TP noise, and away from that TP noise. And we'll, we'll just sit on Sandface right now. He's got that Battle Fury picked up. Going to be looking to do quite a bit of farming. And last five, with those pickups, they didn't even expend all that many ultimates. Chronosphere was used to kill off Freaks up on that top lane, I think. And yeah, this is this is all a little bit unfortunate. And I, I keep forgetting that I could actually interact with these guys. 
and hello lovey in chat ASD to you uh, as well you'll be seeing this message uh, in two minutes while we're in this pause but anyway anyway so again last five back in this game in a big way only three kills the difference right now gold swinging back their way uh, at the moment again they've still got a lot of gold banked up in towers to sort of take off the back of their team fight uh, as well and scenic I mean they had the real they've had some really good early game between the VS and the wisp but in terms of late game scaling I think I have to give it to l5 uh, the AoE stun from the Sand King and the Jakiro never really gets all that much weaker, but you compare that to the Tether stun. The Magic Missile, obviously not as strong. Swap going to be getting oh, going to be getting leveled up a fair bit, so Black Hole probably not going to be all that reliable. But they do have the Faceless Void, uh, they do have the Sand King, and they've got the Queen of Pain for just big damage. They don't even need to really connect uh, the Black Hole to win these team fights, and. Last five, probably going to be looking for more and more organized team fights right now. Hopefully, feeling a little bit more confident uh, with that, with those pickoffs there. And Scenic, they were a long way ahead, but definitely far from unbeatable. And Sam Pace, yeah, just apologizing for this pause. And I guess I'll apologize as well. Um, and anyway, so Yamikin able to pick up some more wards there with the kills that they picked up uh, around the map. He was with. Oh, he was with. Um, he was with Doc uh, and Faceless Void, well, Sam Face, killing the Life Shield up on top. They've managed to pick up some more wards now, so a little bit more map control coming online for them. We've got fairly aggressive warding for, seating, uh, for Scenic at the moment. Those wards are going to be expiring. There's a relocate towards mid. Sam Face, what are you doing, buddy? Watch out. There's the stun. There's the tether. Out comes the nakes. Sam Face going to be killed off right as that pa right as that unpause happens. And pause, giving Scenic a little bit of time to plan for that. So Demanko going to be going back. Faceless Void's dead for a little bit. Paul G was killed off by the Magnus uh, at bot, but he's going to be up in just a second. And Magnus now going to TP back towards mid, hopefully in just a second, but the Reverse Polarity was already used. I'm not sure if Scenic can take this team fight to the same extent that they're looking for it. And Doc going to get some more wards sent out as well, so again, good control. They're going to spot out Freaks jungling up a little bit. But Scenic looking to put the pressure on right now. Faces Void's going to be up in just a second, only 20 seconds away to that Chronosphere. And they've got the Chronosphere, they've got the Black Hole, and they're going to have the Sonic Wave in 25 seconds as well. They don't have the Rank 2 Epicenter just yet, which is a little bit unfortunate, but should be able to be fine to take this team fight. They're now moving around. There isn't a smoke. Ice Path not going to connect there. So. And we've got the Magnus just sitting in the jungle for now. He is not going to be spotted out by that ward. Five man group up by last five, moving towards the top tier two at the moment, and Scenic looking to put up some combined pressure, but Kerb somehow getting his well, somehow getting stuck in the trees, I suspect. No, but Zapface, be careful, my friend! No, the shack will not gonna latch the Sonic Wave under the top. Paul G gonna be almost immediately picked off. The reverse polarity used. Zapface just needs to get that ultimate off. Gonna be turning around, but it's caught in the cast animation. Not enough there. Tier two gonna be now picked up by Scenic on this top lane. And last five, just getting a little bit split up there, and getting caught out. So, Tinnick, good showing by them, and guess Kerbs wasn't stuck, he was just trying to hide in the trees. And Samface was able to pick up his Battle Fury uh, before he died, so it's probably going to be the tier two. Last five, sort of, r well, not running out of lines of defense right now, they've still got plenty, plenty of options. And tier 1 might be picked up for free down on the bottom lane. TP now going there by the Magnus. He's already used the Reverse Polarity, so not as powerful as he could be. TPs are coming in at the moment. And again, no Reverse Polarity. It's only four heroes here. Lewis going to be looking for a big bar strike. Not going to connect. Completely whiffing that. TP is now coming in by Paul G. He's alive again. Lewis not able to dodge that stun with the Sandstorm there. So uh, L5 able to hold on to their tier 2. Um... Scenic able to hold on to the tier 1 unbought, so no trade happening there. Definitely an unfavorable trade to the 4L5, but they are a little bit, ahind, a little bit behind, so even even uneven trades, uh, even uneven trades uh, aren't that bad for them to be taking at the moment. And where's the rune? It's unbought. That's an invis. And Sandface is going to be going back to these ancients at the moment. Blink Dagger again up on Magnus. Has been for a little bit. Lewis getting fairly close to his own blink. Uh, 1800 gold there and relying on him or the faceless void to be doing the, the initiating right now Doc is heading for a mech just to try and deal with the team fight 
uh, over on Scenic at the moment. Dark going to be trying to do a little bit of pushing up on this top lane. Relocate's going to come in. Palgy and Dark need to be extremely careful. They might just turn around and go for the black hole, but no. Dark's going to be stunned up going for the black hole. Palgy going to be trying to escape out, but Dark just buying himself a little bit of time there. Now they're looking for Palgy, but going to be able to TP home and leaving the Lifestealer and the VS up on this top lane, but Wisp showing just what a pain in the ass he can be. And bringing these three hero ganks uh, to last five any time. And they're not really playing five-man Dota at the moment. And I think five-man Dota is where they're going to be winning at the... Well, going to be winning right now. They've just got so many ultimates. All they need to do is connect one or two. And that's the team fight one. And there's still a lot of squishies over on Scenic. I mean, the Vengeful Spirit, only 800 HP. Winner, not that much tankier. Only 1,000 there. Wisp, only 870. And... Hyperstone now picked up by the Lifestealer, tier 2 probably going to be going down, everyone is up for last 5 right now, they don't have the black hole, Ice Path is going to connect on 1, Yamakin taking a little bit of damage, but in comes the Chronosphere, hits on 3, they're going for Freaks, in comes the Epicenter over the top as well, the Sonic Wave going to connect, but they do get the reverse polarity off, Lewis getting extremely low, look at that cleave, they are going to be able to kill off Eric, but it's 3 for 1, 4 for 1 at the moment, Doc on the retreat right now, and last five, not quite connecting that team fight as they would have hoped. Maybe focusing a little bit too much on the life stealer, not killing off the doctor, not killing off the wisp. So Doc gonna be going down there, and five kills going the way of Scenic, only for the Magnus who did manage to get the reverse polarity off. Had he been killed off uh, in the middle of that Chronosphere, that fight could have gone completely differently for last five, but a little bit unfortunate there. So last five might be losing their tier two on mid at the moment. Scenic don't really have the option to go for Roshan uh, right now. They've got one hero down. They don't have their first polarity. Needing to be reasonably careful. They've popped off the mech as well. That's going to be up in just a second. Yamika now heading towards its mid lane, but it is going to be the tier two picked up. Just a little bit too much damage on this life stealer at the moment. And Yamika now moving forward. Needs to be extremely careful. The open wounds is just going to connect. Is it? No. Okay, so. Uh, Scenic actually deciding to back off, and all of last five are up, so playing it reasonably cautiously there. They've got a ward up on the high ground right now, keeping an eye on what's happening mid lane. And they might try and head back to Roshan right now. They've got good damage, they don't really have anyone to tank it. Nake's obviously not able to lifesteal uh, off Roshan. And the sentry ward gonna go down again. Last five don't have all that much map vision right now. They got some more wards down from that, uh, that five man sort of clean up all over the map a few minutes ago. But Scenic, they're playing five-man Dota, and last five just weren't able to connect that team fight. Sandface now heading towards the Mask of Badges, so a big boost in damage for him. Going to be looking to do as much as he can during that Chronosphere, but... Scenic, they're grouped up. They want this last tier two on bot. Last five, they're being a little bit afraid at the moment. They've got the Epicenter, they've got the Blink up on the Sand King, but not looking to defend this. They know that the Reverse Polarity is up. Magnus looks like he's now heading towards a BKB, and that's the last tier 2 taken uh, by Scenic, so last 5 should have hedged back into their base again. They've got good defensive team fight. they can look to take this, we haven't seen a connected black hole just yet, that might be a few ping issues and such uh, on the part of Doc, and I can't actually bring up the ping since I'm actually in the game right now. So Samface lagging pretty heavily, 2k ping on him uh, at the moment, and probably making a fair difference sort of in this game. And now getting eclipsed by farm, just a little bit by the winner, especially with all these towers picked up. We've got the Nakes Bomb primed. Uh, they're looking for a kill here. The relocate is ready. Last five. If anyone just gets slightly out of position, uh, ping gonna happen. They don't want Samface leaving too far. Mask of Madness now picked up on him. Gonna be able to see Magnus uh, up in these Ancients, but it might be a trap. There's three heroes primed. Apology gonna get stunned down on bot. Out comes the Nakes. Uh, using that bomb, but not able to get the next stun off, so Apology going to be fine to retreat out. And in comes the Malthus stun. They want to turn this around. Ice Path not going to connect on anything there. A little bit fobbed by, uh, by Yamakin there, but... Last five, just playing extremely defensively in their base at the moment. And sorry guys, I've got a bit of a cold, I suspect. Um, so hopefully I won't, I won't make too many... make too many noises, but feeling a little bit nasally um, so it looks like Scenic they are going for the Roshan maybe trying to get last five to come and take this team fight uh, or lose Rosh. Rosh not going down all that quickly at the moment and Hero's getting low just from tanking it. Magnus not gonna have all that much he's actually got a Maelstrom instead of that BKB he's getting extremely low at the moment 
Needs to be careful. Lewis is sitting right underneath these uh, Radiant Wards. Gonna pop down a ward of their own. Retreating up to the high ground. Mech gonna pop off. Double heal there for the Magnus. Roshan down at about half HP. Mick's got a long duration left on this double damage rune. Lewis just needs a big Burrow Strike initiation. And hopefully last five gonna be able to coordinate this team fight. Can they take it? Who's on mid? Paul G just a little bit far away. He does have that blinks to get into this team fight, but it doesn't mean he doesn't he's not gonna have the mobility. And Mick looks like he's finished up an orchid. Is it flying out right now, or is it just two oblivion staffs? It's just two oblivion staffs. Hasn't had enough time to finish that up just yet, so a little bit helpful there for the Queen of Pain, for the Sand King as well. And both teams just posturing around the Roshan pit right now. The dire team do have a little bit of time. And they can just farm up these Ancients as well. Ping on the tier 1 on bot. It's on 3 HP. Is anyone from Scenic going to leave to try and deny it? I mean, Wisp could just go around and then just tether back. But not wanting to leave at the moment. Doc! Doc, be careful! Don't get swapped! Oh, Doc is a long way from home. But he just wants this tier 1. No! Get the auto attack! You came all this way! The skewer is looking for him. Gets managed to get around right now. And Doc lagging towards the bottom lane again. And... Uh... He was just looking to pick up this tier 3. There's no backdoor protection on tier 1s. Doc is... Doc! Doc! No! Oh no. Doc just walked into the tower. Lag issues are so unfortunate to watch in a game like this. Oh, what a shame. Oh, the humanity. Oh, Samface and Doc. Are they going to pause, or is there any hope for last five? I mean, just connecting these team fights. Um, yeah, so Samface spiking a little bit. We did see that he went up to uh, two, well, 2 k ping before. What are you complaining about 100 MS? I mean, Australians, US West, we play 250-300. So Samface keeping an eye on the lag issues, but unfortunately Scenic... In that time while Doc was walking into the tier 1, relocate going to go up on top. Paul G just going to blink into the tree. He's going to be able to TP home. Is there going to be a stun? There's going to be a swap. He's not going to be able to get out of here. And in comes the Orchid. Shackle is going to latch. That is a long, long shackle. Paul G going to be picked off here. So the sight and the swap, a little bit too much there. And last five, it's not looking good for them. They're lagging. Doc walked into the tier 1. They weren't able to contest Roshan. And it's just... It's so unfortunate to see there was so much potential in this game, but I think Scenic might have clinched it right now uh, with that Aegis picked up. And Magnus going to be getting fairly close to a Mjolnir as well. Can just throw that on the life stealer or himself uh, to deter any sort of focus fire there. I mean, last time they still got the big team fight, but with Doc lagging, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do this. They need to connect the Black Hole. They need to connect the Chronosphere. That's their initiate. I mean, Lewis could go in. Uh, with the blink bar strike as well, but he really just wants to get the epicenter uh, on top of one of those big AOE disables. So last five gonna hold inside their base for now. Shackle shot not gonna land. Ice path is gonna connect. They already used the bar strike, so when are gonna be able to force her well, force staff herself out. Does not have a haste stream bottled up, uh, sort of as well? So last five, can they take the laggiest team fight of their lives? We'll have to see in just a second. Aghanim scepter now being farmed up by Paul G. Good push stopper there, gonna blink forward at the moment, needs to be extremely careful, they do know that this Orchid is up, and the initiation could come from Magnus at any time, so Scenic, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for them to get up on this high ground, they still haven't picked up a pipe in fact, um, I think that might have been a slightly better pickup for Erky instead of this Maelstrom, but feeling fairly confident with their position at the moment, and an AC picked up by Freaks, he is just gonna be so difficult to take down, and L5 don't really have all that much kiting for him right now, they just need to stun him up, Pick off all of his supports. Maybe just deal with him last. The AC doing a lot of damage to this tower right now. And in comes the... Well, in comes Magnus. But he didn't have enough mana for his ultimate just yet. Gonna pop off the Soul Ring. It's gonna grab three. There is no counter initiation. In comes the Epicenter doing a ton of damage there. Lewis picking up a bunch of kills. In comes Samface. He's gonna land the Chronosphere. Mick's gonna be killed off as well. The relocate comes back in. There's buybacks. Freaks is back. Samface is gonna be picked off. Lewis gonna be forced to hide in the cloud. Demanko gonna be going back in just a second. Maybe just leaving Freaks here. Uh, at the moment, trying to kill off Lewis. Samface buys back. He's going to get that one right click off. Trying to man up against Freaks, who is tanking the tower. There's the bash. Samface might be able to grab this. The infest. Lewis, not quite enough damage there to kill him off. Samface, no! Oh, Freaks is going to be able to just right click him down. Yamakin comes in right now. Armlet toggle. Is there going to be an ice path? Yes! Ice path's going to connect. The dual breath as well. Freaks might be picked off here. <laughs> Pops the armlet, but no. Not enough to get him out of that situation, so... 
five here well five kills picked up there by last five and a couple of buybacks forced out uh, as well Lewis really the hero of that fight doc not able to get the black call off maybe not able to react in time uh, with God this is I'm, I'm sorry guys this is this cannot be pleasant to hear um, me sitting here being all nasally I'm really sorry about that um, but anyway anyway great team fight Lewis MVP getting that epicenter off three-man bar strike Picking up a bunch of kills. There was the Midnight Pulse over the top as well, but still no Black Hole used. They used the Chronosphere, but they haven't really connected that big Wombo Combo team fight that they are looking for. They've got almost rank 2 up in this Macro Pyre as well. They've got great defensive team fight. And again, if they can just farm up the Faceless Void, he can out carry uh, the Life Stealers. So. And especially with the amount of team fight that they've got, just kill him off sort of in that 8 seconds of AoE stun that they've got between the Black Hole uh, and the Chronosphere. And last five, looking a lot better right now. They've got some good map control. Vision actually going to be fading there uh, on those two wards over by the Roshan pit. But Scenic maybe going to just be waiting around for that next Roshan at the moment. But that's giving last five enough time to cool down their ultimates at the moment. And last five still playing extremely defensively off the back of this Faceless Void. And this style of play might just keep them sort of in the game. With this hard carry, it's really up to Scenic to be making things happen, and Samfish looks like he's now heading towards crit with the Blades of Attack picked up. But a hu that was a huge counter team fight. And again, Faceless Void, he's just pretty much the hardest carry in the game, full stop. If Last Five can continue to take defensive team fights, and even if they just go even in the team fights, then they're holding on, getting more farm on the Faceless Void. And Blink Bar Strike gonna connect on Mick, Doc moving forward, but not able to get the Malphus done off, so he's just gonna be fine to win on it away. And some glowy particles on his feet right there. And I wish we going to find those illusions, but Scenic maybe just going to be farming up for now. Magnus has actually finished up the Mjolnir there. And, and keeping an eye on the ping. Hopefully everything is okay. Yep, so Zamar just... Zamar in charge. Zamar's on top of everything. And last five continue to farm. They're going to be happy for this game to go to 60 minutes. And again, Ventral Spirit not contributing all that much. She's got the aura already maxed out. She's got the minus armor from the Wave of Terror, so not a terrible late game support. Wisp does contribute the overcharge, obviously, but that's a lot of eggs sort of in the Nakes basket, really relying on him being able to get those right clicks off. We don't have any hexes for a very long time uh, on Scenic right now, and that's sort of what they can use to counter up this team fight. They do have the Silent, so they might be able to pick off one initiator silence them up but l5 they're not really relying on any single any single hero to initiate they've got the potential for lewis to initiate they've got the potential for doc to just wade in and initiate and sandface as always can just time walk in connect that chronosphere they've got sight that urki is not there with the rest of his team blink dagger on cooldown might look to take this team fight but i think they're just going to be going on the defensive right now they've now got that rank 2 macro pyre up and up on top freak's actually doing a little bit of split pushing he's got a tp but not going to be able to get anywhere near these heroes, so Scenic going to back off at the moment. And again, split pushing could be their demise. We saw five heroes get killed off before uh, as they were split pushing a number of lanes, so needing to be careful there. And l last drive skirmish power uh, isn't awful by any stretch of the imagination. Their ward is going to be dewarded there, so losing vision at the moment, but... Sorry guys, this cold is just... God, I have no idea what's going on. Anyway, anyway, I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, so last five, continue their defensive posturing, trying to get more farm up on Samface. Paul G getting fairly close uh, to that Aghanim Scepter, just needs to farm up the Blade of Alacrity. And Scenic just moving from lane to lane, trying to find an opening at the moment, maybe trying to find a little bit of a hero-to-hero -hero shackle. And then a silence on plus one could be enough to Sable. For them to take this big team fight, they've got big damage if they can connect to reverse polarity. But hopefully, last five have learned their lesson. Going to be getting some good positioning, able to get the initiate off. Looks like Scenic might be wanting to come in with this wave. They're going to crest the high ground. The tier three is actually going to go down. Lois is going to start channeling the ultimate, and they come. Epicenter, big damage. Going to pick off the Magnus first this time. There is a shackle, however, trying to keep him alive. But in comes the black hole. It's on four. Sonic wave. This is the team fight. Four dead, buyback from the Magnus, but big cleanup by last five. Look at that, double kill.
And that is exactly what Last5 wanted there, connecting that team fight absolutely perfectly. Lewis getting the full epicenter off in the middle of five heroes. Uh, Sandface coming in with the Chronosphere. There was a swap, there was a shackle on him, but the black hole from Doc was perfect to clean up to finish off. And then the Sonic Wave over the top. And Tinnik going to be watching from the sidelines right now. Uh, they can mount a push in a little bit. The ultimates are now on cooldown, but Chronosphere is reasonably spammy. And Roshan going to be probably the next target, so not going to see Rax for a little while. Sandface, what are you doing? What are you doing? Looks like he might be lagging just a little bit, walking towards that tower. Erky, looking to finish him off. There is not going to be a backtrack on that, so Sandface going to be killed off solo by the Magnus, doing some huge damage. And freaks. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but that is a little bit, a little bit of my reaction. So anyway, we'll, we'll keep the we'll keep the smack talk to a minimum. Uh, hopefully and Paul G now finished up that Aghanim Scepter so they've got the spammable ultimate on that 40 second cooldown to pick up kill Sandface now dead for 40 seconds Chronosphere gonna be up in 15 they've got top lane pushed out fairly well bot as well pushed out and Scenic gonna be looking to play the lane control game while they wait for this next Roshan we'll see if they try and take this fight uh, they have they did use the reverse polarity up on top to kill off the faceless void but so they don't really have the team fight to match up right now. Freaks does have that heart of Tarask, but again, he's really strong. Everyone else not looking all that beefy at the moment on Scenic. I really think they could do with the pipe. They've got the mech up on Wisp, but no pipe going to be there for a very long time. Going to spot out that Radiant Ward with the last few seconds of that sentry. But last five, defensive posturing for them right now. They're waiting for the Black Hole. They've got the Chronosphere. They've got the Sonic Wave in just a second. And gonna be able to spot out that Observer Ward, but the Sentry goes down. Gonna put down the Sentry, just looking to finish out the ward, but in comes Lewis! Goes for the two-man bar strike, is there gonna be any follow-up? In comes Sandface, gets the three-man Chrono, there's nobody here to help them out. It's gonna be three heroes picked up. Demanko gonna try and get out, Macropire in over the top as well. But going for that ward might be the end of this. Erky comes in, but he's gonna eat some chain stun. And the Sonic Wave, and the Midnight Pulse. This might be Roshan picked up for free, Ballast 5. Freaks is just gonna go for it. He's got good damage. Last five, are you aware of this Roshan? Nyx is going for it solo. There's the ping. Paul G knows. They're going towards the pit. They don't have any big ultimates left. There Are there buybacks on the Wisp? No, there's no buyback for Wisp. There's not going to be any relocates in. Freaks is already getting low. Roshan's only on half HP. Nyx cannot solo this. He's going to get bashed up. In comes Paul G. In comes Samface. The no is here. Might just will rage up trying to get out. But going to try and TP. Is there anything to cancel? No, he cancels. No TP. There's the bash. It's the bash! Oh no! It's gonna be Roshan taken by last five. Cynic now respawning, but it's gonna be a long while till they can get to this pit. Sandface now right clicking away. And Yamakin and Doc gonna be happy just to go and push down on. Well, gonna be happy to push down on bot lane. Lois now heading up. He's gonna pick up an uh, ultimate orb. And what is he heading towards? Looks like he's heading towards a Lincoln Sphere uh, at the moment with those pickups. And last five looking to contest this Roshan right now. They know it's not dead just yet. Gonna force staff Samface out of the pit. Samface, you gotta get back in there. You gotta get this Aegis. But Mick gonna get stunned up. In comes Paul G. It's gonna be another pickoff on this winner. Another Dagon gonna pop. And Samface gonna be able to pick up this, uh, pick up the uh, Roshan and the Aegis. Aegis now up on the Faceless Void. They've got the Chronosphere in just a second. They're looking for another team fight. They could take it. They've got the Epicenter. Big turnarounds for L5 right now, and it's just getting maybe a little bit too late for Scenic. And just we'll just switch back to net worth, but looking good right now for last five. And those three heroes just trying to pick off the ward. A little bit too much time, well, taking a little bit too long, and Lewis able to get in there with the Burrow Strike. And good plays there, and last five, gotta be feeling confident at the moment. And Freak's actually going to disconnect off there, so we're going to have a pause. We're going to take a quick opportunity to look at the XP in gold. So XP swinging back in favor, well, sort of in favor of the Radiant. Gold still a long way different, but a lot of that is just locked up uh, in the towers. So just, just going to be having a pause. Hopefully Freak's going to be reconnecting. But again, maybe just a few too many eggs in this Lifestealer basket. He does have the Rage, but it's not really helping him against the Chronosphere. Uh, against the black hole as well needs to well, relying on right clicking for survivability as well and yep so having that disconnect but again these late games these supports for scenic late game aren't contributing as much 
uh, as they possibly could. Kerb hasn't been able to cancel off uh, a black hole just yet. I mean, Doc's only really landed the one. Uh, hasn't got that rank 3 swap, uh, nether swap up just yet, so no ridiculous range on that at the moment, but... Last 5, looking convincing in his team fights. It's going to be a Daedalus picked up by the Faceless Void as well in just a second. His damage is getting really, really big. Still has a, well, plenty of inventory slots left and probably going to head towards maybe the Butterfly uh, right now. So Lewis is back. Uh, and I don't know if there's going to be an MKB on this Lifestealer for a little while. AC is a good choice in terms of the push. So Freak still disconnecting. Sort of... A lot of ping and a lot of lag issues, as sort of is the nature of online tournaments, and sort of, I guess, is the the nature of um, the land tournaments as well. From from what we've seen, there have been a few technical issues with DreamHack. Uh, for anyone who's been following that, and if you haven't, uh, what sort of Dota rock are you living under that you are watching me? Uh, you are watching me cast defense of the amateur, and you haven't been watching uh, DreamHack. So remember, go and watch DreamHack. It's it's extremely good. But anyway. Last five, looking pretty convincing right now, and probably going to be fairly happy just to sit back, continue to farm, take these team fights right at their tier threes. They've still got a lot of gold that they can pick up uh, from these towers, and they've just got pretty good rolling cooldowns in terms of their team fight. I mean, if they're not forced to use everything, then that means they've pretty much got two full AoE team fights primed. They can use just the Black Hole and the Sonic Wave, and then for the next team fight, they can use the Chronosphere and the epicenter, maybe throw the macro pyre uh, on top of that. And that's two huge team fights that I don't think Scenic really have a response to. Might be able to find a pick up if anyone from last five strays a little bit too far, feels a little bit too confident, then those relocate ganks can come anytime, but they don't have the map vision right now. If we look at the sorry at the dire vision at the moment, it's all on their side of the map. And to be finding those relocate pickups, they really need uh, to be, you know, to have some sight, to have a sight, some sight in a sort of a strange place, uh, just to be able to kill, kill off some big target and then go for it. But as we get in later into the game, it's more likely that last five have buybacks. It's more likely that they're going to be staying grouped up as five, uh, and it's also it's also more likely that the faceless void or the queen of pain could escape from these ganks. They really need to bring the winner in so they can have that silence. But there's not going to be a hex for a while. And I do think, yeah, there's the pipe being picked up by the Magnus. So they're going to make these supports a little bit more survivable uh, to this big Wombo Combo team fight. But last five, they should be able to pick up a Veil fairly soon. And again, there's just so much magical damage. The pipe, it's going to help, but I'm not sure if it's going to make enough of a difference to keep these supports alive after the big AoE disabled. And just with... You know, with the size of the Chronosphere, with the size of the Black Hole, if Scenic are pushing up into the Tier 3 Tower, they're pushing into a very natural choke point. And even with great positioning on the Wisp uh, and the Vengeful Spirit, there's not a whole lot that they can do. I mean, Wisp wants to stay right on top of the Nakes because he wants to be spamming him with the Overcharge, getting that damage off. VS can afford to hang back a little bit, needs to make sure that she's not caught out so she can try and cancel off the Black Hole. Maybe just swap the Faceless Void out of the Chronosphere, so avoid some damage that way. But... Right now, I have to sort of give the edge maybe a little bit to last five. Scenic could take a team fight any time. If there aren't buybacks for last five, that could be a Rax. That could be two Rax, especially with the tier three picked up on top. But last five, pretty good in terms of lane control right now. And they've got that Aegis advantage up their sleeves. So, Freak still not reconnecting just yet. Hopefully going to see the game on pause. I'm running out of random bullshit to say. Uh, and definitely talking during pauses is not my greatest strength. Uh, nice to have some action going on to discuss that. Uh, and you guys are two minutes behind in chat, so I can't ask for any suggestions uh, for things to say. So, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I will just make aware of the fact that... Uh, uh, oh, shoot, is the stream getting choppy? Here, I'll be right back, I'll be right back. Freaks hasn't reconnected yet. I've got 10 seconds, 20 seconds. This is ridiculously unprofessional of me. I'm really, really sorry, but I will be right back. And you guys can all complain at me in two minutes. Uh, so, Zaymar, I will go check the status of the stream by yelling at other people in the house. So, I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm sorry, we're back. But we're still paused, so... That's that story, but, um... And hello to everyone who's watching, 16 viewers. Uh, that is pretty good, especially for this tournament. Extremely happy to see that. And, yeah. I'm, I'm running out of bullshit to say. <laughs> Aussie LD. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Uh, what else can I say? Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, what are we waiting for? Also, big big shoutouts to Yamakin. Uh, some nice play this game. Um... Oh, come on. Oh, thanks, Paul G. Yes, this is a best of one, Lewis. Uh, he won't be able to hear that. Um, oh, God. Okay, so I'm running out of things to say. You guys are going to be catching up fairly soon, so I should act interesting. Um, I could tell you my life story. I'm not sure how great that's going to be. I could come up with some lame Dota puns. Um, I mean, for anyone wanting the explanation of why I sound like I'm American or Canadian, but everybody's saying I live in Australia, it's because I'm from South Africa, lived all around the world, now I live in Australia. Um, American accent is from going to American international schools and stuff like that. Uh, sorry about this pause, it will continue for now. Um, what can I do? Uh, what can I do? Um, I can... I don't know. No, okay. I'll just I'll continue to act interesting. Um, I could talk about DreamHack. That's been pretty exciting. Nobody spoil anything for me. I haven't watched any of that since I want to. Uh, I want to cast some of it, uh, just sort of as practice, sort of as vods. Um, if you guys have any feedback on my casting today, send me an email. Leave something in chat. Um, that sort of thing, I guess. Um, I'm always looking for feedback. Um, there are definitely times when I watch back on my own cast and I cringe and I think Base Kip, why'd you say that? That was extremely stupid. The, the correct call is this. Um, so feel free to point those sort of things out in general. I guess style comments um, could make those as well. If you think there's anything I can improve on, if there's any way specifically that I can improve on it, then feel free to, uh, feel free to, um, feel free to make those comments. Uh, and. I think there's this, there's this trend where people say, oh, you know, if you couldn't do better, then why criticize? Well, I, I don't think it's fair. I mean, obviously, even if you don't personally, um, even if you don't personally cast or if you personally don't participate in something, all of you guys watch enough streams, you watch enough Dota to know what separates a commentator that you like to listen to and a commentator that you don't like to listen to. Not necessarily what makes a good commentator a bad commentator, I think that's a fairly arbitrary uh, distinction, but um, in terms of what you like, well, tell me what you like to hear. If you want to hear uh, better teamfight play-by-play, then say that. If you want to hear, um, I guess, it, it, you know, if you think my analysis is a little bit off, then, then tell me that. Um, and okay, so maybe the stream isn't choppy for everyone. Hopefully we just got through that period, and hopefully that period was during the pause. Um, but yeah, I'm continuing to try to act interesting uh, during this pause. Uh, not sure how well that's going. Uh, I guess, yeah, talking about streaming, talking about casting. Uh, I've been at this for a little bit now. Uh, I'm uploading videos and stuff to my YouTube page every single day and hopefully putting out um, other content, so not just casting every week. So if you guys are on R2, you might have seen my Juggernaut Blade Fury mechanics video that I put up a little while ago, which was okay, I'm awful at Sony Vegas, um, but but yeah. So that's, that's that, I can see some people are dropping out just because this pause has been going for such a long time. Um, I wonder if I've got Hopefully this doesn't crash anything. We'll see. 
I don't know if you guys want to watch me play Spelunky or if I just crashed anything by trying to open up Spelunky. So this is Spelunky. Um, this is a game that you can download right now. I believe it's been released for XBLA. Uh, I am awful with this game, um, but how do I rope again? God, I'm so terrible. I haven't played this in months, but I'm, I'm running out of interesting things to say, and Freak still hasn't reconnected, so... Uh, how do I put this up? There we go. Okay. I'm gonna jump the boulder. Can I jump the boulder? Oh, God! No, wrong direction. Okay, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. That's... I'm awful. I'm... I don't know why I did this to myself. Why would I open this game? Why would I do this? Why would I do this? Um, Freak still hasn't reconnected. You guys can probably see that in the background. Hopefully the stream is all running fine. Um, what else is worth talking about? Uh, th the weather here is okay. It's getting a little bit warmer. Um, I don't know. I could put on some music. I could talk about my computer issues. Uh, I don't know how, how many of you out there are inclined in terms of, in terms of hardware. Uh, shoot, so I just... I may have just ruined everything. No, okay, it looks like we're still streaming just fine. Okay, so Frix is back in Mumble. He, his level is over 9,000. You can't scoreboard the level while he's disconnected. Um, he's level 20. I won't contribute anything here. Yeah, there we go. So, the makeup. We'll be revealing that, so life's still not going to get all that much more powerful. Probably going to be looking to sell the Hand of Midas fairly soon. That's going to help him along his way to an MKB. Um, Zamface can sell that Wraith to get the Daedalus, I think. Um, uh, it, it would be a shame to see this game go to a disconnect. Uh, I don't know what the tournament rules would state. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to give the game away uh, either way in terms of like, oh, well, this team was ahead, so so they win. I hope we don't have some rules stating something like whoever's ahead in kills. Uh, well, obviously, if if it's ahead in kills, then why not just... Um, why not just get one kill, get the first blood, and then just have someone permanently disconnect? Uh, it would be a bit cheesy, but I guess that would be within the rules. So hopefully we've got something in terms of remakes. Uh, or we will just be waiting around. Um, okay, I'm going to pull over stream chat. You guys are going to see this in two minutes. But, um... So, quickly need things to talk about running <laughs> out of content. <laughs> Send help. <laughs> um, yeah, that's... That is the story right now, so... You guys will... <laughs> you guys will see this in two minutes. Um, talk about politics. Okay, ah, oh, shit, I don't know anything about politics. My political knowledge is extremely limited since I've lived all around the world, and that means that when I keep moving, I can't vote. Uh, well, I haven't been able to vote until, like, last year anyway, but I, I haven't been able to vote. I haven't really followed local politics any time. Um, just because it's never all that relevant, I'm always just somebody visiting uh, the country. Uh, politically, I don't want to comment too much on Australia. I mean, I think there are criticisms that it's a bit of a nanny state, and the, the faith in the government uh, seems to be a little bit at an all-time low uh, right now, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully it'll be okay. Hopefully that just means that Australian voters uh, are fairly well-informed and that they're they're unhappy with what's happening. And Freaks reconnects! Freaks reconnects! Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, can't, does everyone remember what they were doing? Okay, so Freaks reconnects. How's everyone's ping? Doc is at 3k ping, but, um... Doc is still at 3k ping. Yeah, 3k ping. Okay, 3k ping. 
Oh, ducks. That's three seconds before anything happens for him in game. Okay, we've unpaused. We've unpaused. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, so Erky is farming up his hood. That's going to be big in terms of the team fights, as I mentioned, but they've already got tons of damage. They're going to spot out that ward. They know that there is an ob sword there. And both teams probably cheating during that delay to know where the enemy's wards are, so... I guess that's a fairly moot point. It's fairly even. Ping's gonna go back right now. Doc is completely stationary. I'm not sure if he can even move. Um, okay, he's lagging a little bit less now. He's got the same ping as I do. It's not a good thing. I'm at 470, but I'm not playing, so that is less relevant for me. And it's gonna be a smoke right now, and Doc... Maybe just going to be following someone right now. It is going to be a smoke gank. This is fairly aggressive for L5 right now. They do have lanes pushed out. They do have the Aegis advantage as well to take this team fight. And they're looking for Scenic. Don't pick up the illusions. Don't pick them up. Don't pick them up. There's a ward right there. They're not going to. They're heading up. And, oh, Magnus isn't there. He's going to be caught out. But in comes the bar strike. They're going to get curb. There's the right click. He's going to be killed off. And now everyone on Scenic on their retreat. Magnus will TP in in time, but... But, yeah. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, okay, so that's... That's that, that's one pick off for last five. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it is the, the VS. And I, I need to stop looking at stream chat. You guys are gonna distract me, but, um... Uh, to duck... Not gonna get the, the ward off. You can't go from this angle. You need to add, Oh, you can. Okay, I lie. I lie. You can put it on this section from that angle. Normally you have to go from here, or you come in from here. Um, so... Base skip showing his noobishness there. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Lewis, just tanking up a little bit at the moment. Looks like he's still heading towards that Lincoln Sphere. Now, perhaps. Gonna help him avoid the swap, I suppose, and the Shackle Shot as well. The only A we stun over on Scenic right now is the Reverse Polarity. And Cynic playing fairly defensively at the moment, just maybe waiting for last five to leave somebody behind. Uh, go for that big relocate gank. And Freak's now just farming up on this top lane. Probably going to be selling his Hand of Midas fairly soon. True, try and pick up another item. And now TPing back to base. What's he going to be picking up? Uh, not going to sell the Midas just yet. Just going to buy another TP. And getting ready for this team fight on mid. L5 didn't have to use any big abilities uh, in that last team fight. So... Ping's coming out now, furious pings, pings on the high ground, pings back, L5 not 100% sure about what they want to do, they've still got the Aegis advantage and they could be looking to use that, just sending the illusion forward now, harassing down the tower, but that's actually going to send it into deny range, so might be able to pick that up here, will the hero siege creep be able to finish it, no, Freak says no, he's going to kill that off, are they going to deny it, no, okay, so tower's left on 54 HP, uh, Cynic either not paying attention or just don't care, and another smoke gank for last five. This is pretty ballsy. They're gonna go straight to the same position, looking for that, uh, looking for another, well, looking for anyone on Scenic. But they're all grouped up at the tier two, on bot. There haven't been any pings, so I'm not sure if Scenic suspect this uh, at the moment. And they're just choosing to back off extremely defensively. And Curb's gonna be four staffs back there as well by, by himself. They don't have a sentry down. They're gonna be smoking up. And L5 going to be out of the smoke in just a second as well, so they're probably going to back off. And Cynic, the line has been drawn. They're looking f well, for the jungle, but not going to be spotting anyone there. Mick moving forward right now, going around the long way for Curbs. Uh, and, God, I'm already forgetting names. That pause was an eternity, so Erky is going to be coming around. He they've got the pipe picked up now. The tower on mid is going to go down. That wasn't denied. Uh, Cynic, maybe a little bit of a misplay there. And everybody smoked up, but all five heroes are up on top. They have been spotted by those creeps. So, Scenic not going to be able to find a pickoff at all. And Winner are probably going to be heading towards a Hex uh, fairly soon. Regenerant is down, so ping spam happens right now for L5. And did they have a ward? No. Okay, so that's... I guess, I guess whatever they had was just dewarded, perhaps? That might be the case. So L5 push as 5 up on top. TP check. Doc's got one. Lewis has got one. Paul G's got one. Yamakin's got one. They are good to go with this push. They just need to make sure that they don't get grouped up, don't get caught out in the reverse polarity. But even if it connects, they might have enough just to survive. Sandface is going to be coming back. 
If he backtracks some big damage, that could be huge. They've still got the mech, they don't have a pike. But again, it's mainly right click damage uh, on Scenic right now from the Lifestealer and the Magnus. So that is that is really what they're looking for. Probably going to maybe load up the Nakes Bomb inside the Magnus this time around. But L5 looking to take this tower for free. They've still got all of their teamfight ultimates available. And Scenic trying to bait them out uh, on just a couple of heroes. Good long split from them uh, at the moment. And L5, fairly defensive for them as well. Don't want to take this teamfight. They do have this 10 second BKB up on Paul G. Not going to help him against the reverse polarity, but it does mean that he doesn't give two hoots about the silence. Um, so, last five move, moving forward now. Freaks. Still hasn't picked up an item. He's got the buyback available, and Mick gonna fall. Gonna miss that power shot there, so Creeps just being pulled around to the wrong side. Pings go now! Sandface comes in! In comes the power strike! Freaks is stuck at the top of the corner, where the shackle is gonna latch! In comes the reverse polarity! Sonic wave over the top, bit of an awkward team fight! Doc gonna throw down the ultimate, but the tether's gonna cancel that, and the silence on top! It's gonna be two picked off, and three, and that's gonna make it fuckle, and four, and five! Scenic taking a big team fight there, fairly defensively, well, fairly defensively. Who's got buyback on L5? That just did not work out for them. And maybe a little bit over eager to initiate. Uh, so getting cleaned up. And looks like that Aegis might have faded in the middle of that fight. Yeah, looks like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that it, that hadn't been up for a little bit. So Sandface didn't have that Aegis. They didn't have that advantage. Gonna get cleaned up. Lewis gonna be coming back. He's got the epicenter to at least slow down the push. But I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to stop it. And who's still got buyback? There's another buyback from Samface. He doesn't have the Chronosphere, however. And that's about it. Doc's got buyback, but he's going to be respawning in a sec. They do have the fortification available. Lewis needs to make sure he's not picked out, but he's going to get swapped. Bar strike through. He has the blink. Going to get silenced. Not going to even use the blink. Shackle not going to connect. And now Scenic wailing away on this tower. Fortification is going to pop. Heroes are coming back online. They're just waiting for the Queen of Pain. In comes the bar strike. In comes the epicenter. Kirby getting extremely low. Ice path over the top. Sandface trying to stand up to this life stealer, but no. Gets right click down. Not co no, not dead just yet. Erky looking for the oh, looking for the nuke. Does connect. Lewis gonna get shackled to the tree. Hero shackle there. And Scenic. They're looking for this. They haven't picked up the racks just yet. Freak's now right clicking away. In comes Erky as well. He's doing some big damage. Doc moving forward. Already used that black hole. This might be the end. 4L5. In comes the Sonic Wave. Looking for the kill. Double kill for Paul G. Buybacks now. Wisp and and Wisp and the VS gonna be teeping back in just a second. Gonna be using that relocate, hopefully. But they relocated back to base! No! There's no backup. That there's the tier three. Well, there's the racks going down. Tier three already dead. Erky gonna be picked off. Paul G comes in, but they just want the second barracks. Doc now coming in. He might be right click down. Gonna pop off the well, gonna pop off the mech. He's now on the retreat. Paul G's still looking for him. Gonna blink forward. Ice bath not gonna connect. Do they have anything to cancel this? There isn't gonna be the bash from Sandface this time around. It's gonna be two racks picked up for Scenic. So L5, not the best position there. Just one just one messed up team fight for them. And not sure if it's gonna be game. They've still got one hope that it ha it isn't Mega Creeps just yet. And Roshan gonna be up in just a second as well. They're gonna have their ultimates available for that. 40 seconds on the black hole, 15 seconds on the epicenter, but Scenic very convincing there. And picking up two racks just off the back of that team fight. And L5, I mean Having their lanes pushed out right now is not a defense. It's about half a layer of defense. Okay, this is this is Basekip's crazy theory of, of how uh, how advantages work in Dota. So if you lose a team fight, uh, the mark of a good team fight is able to, being able to take out one or two layers of enemy defense. So one layer counts as uh, a tower. So two layers is picking up two towers. If you pick up a tier three, that's another layer. Uh, obviously, a rack is a layer as well. Obviously, some layers are worth more than others, but once you start to run out of layers, um, once you start to run out of layers, then you're in big trouble. That's when the you know that's when a single team fight can end the game. So, L5 they ran out of tier twos fairly early on. They were backed up to their tier threes, so any team fight uh, at, right at those tier threes that they lost would spell the you know would spell the loss of those racks. And normally, having your creep waves pushed out is a line of defense. It means that if you have all of your waves pushed up to the enemy base and you lose a team fight, it's going to take them too long to push in. Uh, it's going to take them too long to push back the waves uh, to pick up anything significant, to pick up your racks. But um, in this case, there's so much push on Scenic between the two cleaving heroes, uh, the Lifestealer and the Magnus as well, 
The having your lanes pushed out is not a line of defense. L5 looking to take a team fire, but their wave is being pushed in up on top. They don't have a Rax to take there, but the tier fours might be taking a little bit of damage, and they're just looking for the initiate right now. But look at Scenic. They are spread out all the way along the ridge. And not going to be caught out at the moment. Going to be have, having pings going back right now. But if they TP back, they won't be able to defend this Roshan. Looks like they might just be trying to cut the wave uh, back off up here. Try and let their creeps push out. But look at these siege creeps. Look at this creep wave. Tier 4 tower taking a lot of damage. In comes the weaker creeps, but they just cannot defend against this. And bot lane's pushing out in favor of Scenic as well. Looks like the team fight's gonna go. The Chronosphere on Erky. They want to pick off the Initiator. There's a silence on Sandface. In comes the Epicenter. In comes the Burst Strike. In comes the Blink. The Black Hole. It's gonna be cancelled. Lewis gonna get stunned up. And Lewis, was he able to get out the Epicenter? I think he was there, but it's a triple kill for Paul G. Buybacks now for Scenic. That's one more line of defense for them. Sandface might be able to make it out. But he's gonna head up onto the high ground. Just needs to be right clicked. Gonna try and TP home. They're not gonna find him. He's in the fog. Is able to make it out. So Paul G also just hiding up onto the high ground right now. Waiting for that blink cooldown. I don't think they have any sight on him either. So forcing out this buybacks from Scenic. Who bought back? Winner bought back. And... Magnus buying back as well. But that's going to give them this Roshan in fact. And Freak's not buying back there. He's got buyback available. And 6.9k gold up as well. This game could still go either way, but the tier 4 tower is taking some big damage on mid, and Freak's going to outright buy that Abyssal Blade, and that's going to help him lock down at least one target. This is a cheese as well for Scenic, and L5, they've blown most of their ultimates as well. Not going to have a black hole for a very long time. Sandface, it's 30 seconds to that next Chronosphere, but the game might end before that. Epicenter 30 seconds away as well. Queen of Pain going to pick up that Orchid at the moment, just trying to help out, but they've only got one tier 4 and the Ancient left. Mm, oh, actually, GG well played, gonna be called by Yamakin. Not gonna want to take this team fight, and not thinking that they can hold on. So GG gonna be called, and everyone on last five gonna disconnect. And they were looking really good, maybe with, without the ping issues, maybe without one of those, you know, one or two minor, minor errors early game. Might have been able to take this out, an extremely good game. So everyone at L5 gonna disconnect. Auto win gonna be, well, not an auto win, but win gonna be awarded to Scenic. Uh, hopefully the replay will reflect the correct score as well. Scenic not going to be disconnecting just yet. And yeah, no, it was it was super impressive play by both teams. And L5, their team fight lineup just working out really well. Uh, but Scenic managing to take one team fight off them, and that just spelt the racks uh, from their early game advantage. So Scenic take the early game, L5 take the mid game, and Scenic managing to hold on, uh, take the late game there. So yeah, 15k. Difference in gold there and completely broken at the end of the game. But anyway, I've been base kipped. This was a lower bracket matchup for the defense of the amateur tournament. This is L5 versus Scenic. This is a best of one, so L5 are knocked out, uh, unfortunately. And Scenic will continue. So, that is that. And yeah, thanks.